Okay, we start our course with the Cartesian coordinate system. This is a mathematical system that specifies each point uniquely in a plane. Uh, as you can see here, this is a plane and it's determined by the x-axis and the y-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal line, the y-axis is the vertical line. And the region they, that they make. I mean this region and as you can see it consists of positive x axis negative x axis that's the x axis the y axis consists of positive part above the x axis and negative part below the x axis this is called a Cartesian coordinator uh, coordinate system or rectangular coordinates now we can determine po any point in that plane. For example, if we want to determine the point 2, 3 and the point negative 1, negative 2, 2, 3 means 2 steps on X and 3 steps on Y. So that means 2 steps run and 3 steps rise. So here, look at this uh, coordinate uh, system. We have 2 steps run and three steps rise and then we reach that point two three similarly we can determine the point negative one negative two negative one that means one step to the left on x-axis this is run and two steps in the direction of the uh, I mean on the y uh, negative y axis that's rise so two steps downward and then we reach this point negative one negative two now we can in the Cartesian coordinate we can determine distance between any two points and the formula that we need to use is this distance between the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is given by d equals square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared so for example if we want to find the distance between those two points 2 3 and negative 1 negative 2 we first name them so we call the first one x1 y1 and the second point is x2 y2 and then we apply the distance formula so x2 is negative 1 minus x1 is 2 squared plus y2 negative 2 minus y1 is 3 and then square so this is square root negative 1 negative 3 and negative 1 negative 2 is negative 3 squared plus negative 2 negative 3 is negative 5 and we have squared here so this is square root square root of negative 3 squared is 9 plus negative 5 squared is 25 and that's square root 34 so the distance between those two points is square root 34. It's about 6. So if we want to approximate it, it's about 6. Now we can also determine the midpoint between the given points. So if we want to find the midpoint here between 2, 3 and negative 1, negative 2, we can apply the formula x1 plus x2 over 2, the average on x and the average on y y1 plus y2 over 2 this gives us a point so for example for our two points the two points were 2 3 and negative 1 negative 2 so this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 we find this midpoint so x1 plus x2 2 plus negative 1 over 2 comma x uh, y1 plus y2 over 2 and then plus minus is minus 2 minus 1 is 1 over 2 and plus minus is minus 3 minus 2 is 1 over 2 so the midpoint is 1 half 1 half this is 1 half here this is 1 half so that means this point is half half this is the midpoint between those two points we also can study some geometric figures like the circle. 
So the circle centered at say HK, some point HK, uh, with radius R is given by x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. This is the general form of the equation of the circle centered at hk and with radius r. If it's centered at the origin, if the center is the origin, then h is 0 and k is 0. That means we are left with x squared plus y squared equals r squared. For example, if we want to find the equation of the circle of a circle centered at 1, 3 with radius 2. So in this case, we determine the center is HK and the radius is r, then we write the equation. So it's x minus h, h is 1, squared, plus y minus k, k is 3, squared, equals r squared, 2 squared, and this is x minus 1 squared, plus y minus 3 squared equals 4. Now, if we want to graph this, 1, 3 is a point here. So this is 1 on x and 3 on y this point is the center and then radius is 2 so we need to subtract 2 here add 2 here add 2 subtract 2 so if we add start here subtract 2 from 1 we get negative 1 add 2 to 1 we get 3 so that's those are the endpoints on the horizontal uh, axis or a horizontal line or a radius and we add 2 to 3, we get 5, and negative 2, we get 1. So this is the determined circle. Now one more application of that, or use of the uh, cord Cartesian coordinates, is to determine the lines, and then we can determine the uh, equations of lines so equation of lines take we ha we learned from previous courses uh, that straight line equation of straight line can be given by or can be written as y equals mx plus b this is called slope intercept form because we have slope here m and intercept b what is the slope the slope y is y sorry the slope m is y2 minus y1 the different the change on y over the change on x so if we know two points we can find the slope of the line that uh, passes through those two points. For example, here, if we want to find the slope of the line that passes through those two points, negative 1, negative 2, then we find the difference on y. For example, we call, we have 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2. It doesn't matter which one is x1, y1. So let's call this x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. And then we have the slope y2 minus y1 negative 2 minus 3 over x2 minus x1 and then negative 5 over negative 3 which is 5 thirds this is the slope it's positive as you can see the line is increasing and the other form is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1 this is called slope point or point slope form because we need the slope and we need one point x1 y1 to write this equation now let's do some examples we want to use the Cartesian coordinate shown here 
to determine the points A, B, C, D, E, F. Actually, um, I'm going to do it for example for A and D. The point A is has the coordinates. A has three steps on X and three steps on Y. So it's 3, 3. What about D? D has two steps on X. I mean negative 2 because it's on the left, I mean on the negative X. And 5 on Y. This side is 5. And so on. You can determine the other points. Let's do F, for example. F is how many steps on X, positive X, 8 steps. And on Y, we have 2 steps down, so downward, so it's negative in which quadrant actually the Cartesian coordinate can divide the region this region into four regions so this is called first quadrant this is second quadrant this is third quadrant and this is fourth quadrant point A is in the first quadrant P point D is in the second quadrant point F is the in the fourth quadrant find the distance between the points A and B A is 3 3 and B is where's B B is negative 5 and 6 so we name those two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 and then we apply the distance uh, formula so x2 is negative 5 minus x1 is 3 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared this square root negative 5 negative 3 negative 8 squared plus 6 minus 3 is 3 squared this is 64 plus 9 which is square root 73 now we want to find the equation of a circle that satisfies the coordinates we have the conditions at radius 7 and center and for negative 9 this is h this is k so the equation of the circle is given by x minus h h is 4 squared plus y minus k k is negative 9 equals the radius squared and then x minus 4 squared negative negative is positive 7 squared is 49 we want to find the equation of a circle that centered at the origin that means the center is 0 0 this is HK and pass through through the point 8 7 this is X1 Y1 or XY so the equation is X squared plus Y squared equals R squared this is equation centered at the origin and then we have we are given a point so we need to find R how to find R we find R by using this this information when we have some information that says the line or circle or the geometric figure passes through some point that means this point can be used to find other constants so we know x y let's call these x y and then plug them into this equation x is 8 y is 7 and the right hand side is r squared we want to find r so this is 64 plus 49 equals r squared that means r squared is 113 so that means r is square root 113 we don't put plus or minus because the radius is always positive all radius cannot be negative Now, find the equation of the line with slope 2 and intercept, y-intercept 2, that's B. So we know that from the slope-intercept formula, it's mx plus B. So m is 2 and B is 2. This is the equation, the required equation. Now, sometimes we're given an equation with the, following, with the following shape. It's not written in the 
a standard form. The standard form is mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. So the coefficient of x is the slope. So here, if I ask you what is the slope, you can't say this slope is the coefficient of x because this equation is not written in the standard form. So we should write it first in the standard form, then find the slope. So we solve for y. We need to solve for y. So let's subtract 7x from both sides. We get negative 3y plus 6 equals negative 7x. And then subtract 6 from both sides. We are isolating y. And then we divide by negative 3, the coefficient of y. So the equation becomes y equals 7 thirds x plus 2. Now what is the slope? The slope is the coefficient of x because the equation is written in the standard form. Now we want to find the equation of the line that passes through the point negative 3 and 3. So this is x, y and parallel. The word parallel is very important. When you have two lines and they are parallel, say L1, L2, those are the two lines and they are parallel, that means the slope of the first one is equal to the slope of the second one. If they are perpendicular, then the slope of the first one times the slope of the second one equals negative one. This is when they are perpendicular. But for now we have parallel lines and we are given an equation of one of the lines. So we are looking for equation of a line that is that passes through a point and parallel to the this line. So let's find the slope of this line and that because when we write the equation we or uh, we need two things. We can't let's use the this formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 the slope point form because we are given a point so this is x1 y1 and we need to find the slope how to find the slope of this line we don't know the slope but we know that it's parallel to this line so let's find the slope of this line because the the two uh, slopes will be equal so as we did in the previous example we solve for y so let's subtract 4x from both sides we get negative 9y minus 5 equals negative 4x and then we solve for y then divide by the coefficient of y when we divide by the coefficient of y we get negative 4 over negative 9 that's positive 4 9th x minus 5 over 9 because plus over minus is minus now we have the equation of the other line is written in the standard form. So what is the slope? The slope is the coefficient of x. So this is the same as the slope of our line. So we know the line, we know the, uh, the slope of the line, and we know the point, so we can apply the formula. y minus y1, y1 is a 3, equals the slope. The slope is 4 ninths times x minus x1 x1 is negative 3 negative negative is positive we can write this equation in the standard form we have y minus 3 equals 4 nines times x we distribute this get more space here and 4 nines times 3 is 12 ninths and then we add 3 to both sides we get y equals 4 ninths x now, nine, 12 over 9 is 4 over 3 if we divide by 3. Plus this 3, we, I'm just simplifying. So we multiply this by 3, we get 9 plus 4, which is 13 over 3. This is the equation of the line that passes through the point negative 3, 3, and parallel to the, equa the line 4x minus 9y minus 5 equals 0. Now we want to find the equation of the line with a slope negative 4. This is m the, and passes through the midpoint of the line segment uh, that join p and q. p is negative 2, negative 4, and 3 and 6. So we have a slope and we have a point. So we can use slope point formula. 
So y equals m, I mean y minus the slope point is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We know the slope, the slope is negative 4, but we don't know the uh, the point that this equation passes through, but we know the midpoint. The mid, uh, or that point is the midpoint. The midpoint is, now we need to apply or to find the midpoint. The midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2. x1 is negative 2 plus x2 is 3 over 2. And y1 plus y2 over 3, over 2. So this is 1 half and 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So this is the midpoint. This is x1, y1. Now we just plug it here. We have x1 is 1 and y1, x1 is 1 half and y1 is 1. Then we can simplify this equation. We write 1, y minus 1 times 4, negative 4 times x, negative 4x, negative 4 times negative 1 half is plus 2. And then we add 1 to both sides. We get y equals negative 4x plus 3. So this is the required equation. Now the last example, a furniture store offers free delivery service to all places within 25 miles radius of its warehouse distribution center. Okay, and so that means we have a circle and we have the point here. This is the warehouse, the warehouse distribution center. And we, within 25 miles, we c they can deliver, uh, the, uh, deliver the stuffs or service. But if you live outside this circle, then they don't uh, give you f or offer you free delivery. So if you live 20 miles east, now for the directions, we know that in the, in the map, this is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west. So we have 20 miles east. You are 20 miles east. So 20 miles east. And then 14 south. So 14 south, I don't know whether it's here or here. Is it inside or outside? So to determine, we need to find, to see, to see if it's in the, within that radius. So let's find the distance between this point and the center. So the center is, okay, this point is 20, 14. And I'm not sure whether whether it's inside or outside the circle. So the distance is square root. We want to find this distance from the center. So this distance is, we need two points. So let's call this x1, y1. And the center is, let's say it's 0, 0, x2, y2, or x1, y1. It doesn't matter which one is x1, y1. So x2 is 0 minus x1 is 20 squared plus y2 is 0 minus y1 is 14 squared. So this is square root 20 squared or negative 20 squared plus negative 14 squared. So 20 squared is 400 and 14 squared is 196 and if we add these we get square root 596 and using calculator we find that this is approximately 24.13 so 24 this distance is 24.13 so we still within that radius the radius is 25 so we can get or you can get a free delivery of your item.